Alright, so this is just going to be a super quick video covering some of the new information we got for the faction scenario for 1.2, which is coming on the 26th of September. We got a bunch of news for both the PvP faction scenario and the PvE scenario, as well as some cool new details for some of the other content that is also coming. To start off with, the faction scenario starts on the 26th, as I've mentioned, and it will last 19 days. These seasons are incredibly short, and they're incredibly fast-tracked devs have said progress is up to seven times faster so imagine you're hitting a node you're going to get seven times the yield which is a lot and that is purely because the faction scenario is all out pvp it is straight up open world pvp it is not opt-in it is forced you will be raiding bases you can have your base raided however it is again i'm going to mention this there are safe zones for your faction where you can build a safe zone base if you want to just keep in mind the only way to get star chrome is by doing your base in an engagement zone outside of your safe zone doing that you will put your base outside the safe zone and you will purify prism deviations prism deviations are effectively think of it as a chaos cortex and you will obtain these chaos cortexes from faction pvp events okay let's call them the proper name you will get these prism deviations from faction events you will take them back to your base outside the safe zone and you will purify it or contain it and you will get what's called prism energy that will contribute to your faction's overall score and you will also be individually graded and given bonus rewards based on your standing so you have an individual leaderboard to compete with against your other faction members you have a hive that you'll play in that is 12 players and you'll be working together as a faction to be the winning faction there are two factions if i didn't mention this the rosetta and the mayfly both have their own safe zones and both have their own unique specialization trees one has drones for the rosetta and the other is more magic and talents and potions and all that stuff for the mayfly another thing on the containment side of things they can take anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours this is really cool in my opinion this is going to open up a lot of open world pvp and it's going to generally be really fun and the other additional thing I want to mention that is very important to this and I know is a big factor for a lot of people. You do not lose anything on death. You keep everything you have. You will never lose items. You'll never lose gear. So you can jump straight back into the action. The only thing that you will have to worry about is repairing your gear and obviously probably getting more ammo and meds and stuff like that. General utility stuff that you will actually use yourself. Other than that, the devs also as soon as the dev stream happened they mentioned faction balancing there is a faction balancing system and you will not have to worry about faction bloating and overall ganking and all of that stuff in pvp it's going to be very balanced and i'm happy this is the first thing they openly addressed when they started the dev stream as this was a major concern for a lot of people the other important thing to note is that the rosetta in my opinion will be picked for the skin but i believe the mayfly have the better specializations when it, those buffs and magic we're talking about as the uh rosetta or sorry yeah the rosetta are purely drone specializations which could be all right we don't know the full details of all of the specializations yet alongside this as i said you will never lose gear it's fast growth there's faction balancing individual leaderboards and faction rewards for your contribution Again, it lasts 19 days. There's three phases where you'll be able to get Starcrom, and it launches on the 26th of September. Important to note, if you start on the 26th of September, you will perfectly align with the release of the Way of Winter PvE scenario, which I know a lot of people are hyped for. The PvE scenario has been confirmed to release on the 17th of October, if there are no bugs or game breaking features anything that breaks effectively the, their set release date they want to have people in the new pve scenario on the 17th of october that will coincide with the release of the new weapon the hk416 four other new blueprints that you'll be able to earn as well that weapon is not exclusive to the pve scenario by the way you will be able to get the hk416 on any other scenario as well however banners will be exclusive and this is an important thing to note i believe the pve scenario will have an exclusive wish machine banner that will make the hk416 easier and be able to get more fragments but there is a new blueprint coming for the faction pvp scenario it is the katana the masamune is finally getting a blueprint and i believe that is going to be one of the headlining banners in the wish machine for the faction scenario 
as they did hype it up a little bit. The other very, very cool thing that was mentioned in the dev video is something that I made a concept for way back in, I think, July, or maybe early August, was a concept for a creative mode-like experience using Eternal Land. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's very similar to Fortnite Creative. Obviously, we know Eternal Land in Once Human is sort of like your creative little realm where you can do whatever you want. Now, I saw this and I instantly thought, Fortnite Creative, this has a fuckload of potential, right? Obviously, maybe the devs already had this in mind, or they saw my concept, I don't know, either or. And, uh, yeah, they actually did it. The devs are adding an Eternal Land workshop. You will be able to vote and send in your own custom maps with the rule sets and everything, and the devs will turn it into a functional experience with its own dedicated in-game UI where you can join and participate and vote on maps. This is quite literally game-changing. This is actually so insane that i don't think some people grasp how game changing this is like we're going to have our own pvp experiences made by the community and you're going to be able to play them with other people like it is going to be pretty awesome i've been working on my own pvp map i do have a full video for that soon to coincide with 1.2 because it is something pretty big that i've been working on and i'm very excited to share that with you guys but i also just want to quickly mention custom maps are coming and it's it's going to bring so much life to the game especially during those down periods you know i know hard mode wasn't a forte for a lot of people or well, now you can even just play custom experiences made by the community this is fucking awesome and this is only going to get better and better add more features they've already said they want to add more features to this experience and it's only going to get bigger and become even possibly what fortnite creative became for that game that also coincides with the release of 1.2 which is in one week time the other quick thing i want to mention is that the unrestricted pvp scenario is coming quarter one next year this is a very rough estimate it's not coming this year but it's coming next year what i mean by unrestricted pvp is it's basically a rust scenario it is one-to-one -one of rust it is one human's version of rust and that is coming early next year there's no opt in the restrictions all up pvp no matter where you go that'll be interesting and i think that covers most areas that i wanted to talk about from today's dev stream uh, i've also had the once human starcrom code that they handed out today in on the screen for you to redeem Simply hit F3 and press X in game and you'll be able to type the two codes in. We'll give you a total of 1,000 Starcrom. Hey, it's something. Always take those freebies. So yeah, that is what we got and I'm pretty pumped. I am very excited for the future of this game. But that does leave me on one very serious note. Servers are abysmal in this game. And it is going to be the detriment and if not the death of this game if they don't figure it out. Servers are quite literally making the game unplayable. Making people quit. And if the faction scenario is going to see people be on 20v20 or 50v50 conflicts, raiding in these massive battles, I am concerned about the servers. And this is a very serious problem that Once Human is facing. But I'm going to be honest, Once Human probably has some of the worst servers I've ever seen in a game. And it is shocking how bad they are. But that is something for the devs to figure out, and I hope they can figure it out. Because fuck, man. They're taking away from a brilliant game with brilliant gameplay due to piss-poor servers. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.